Hey everyone, welcome to the stream. This is Accounting Nightmare. Welcome Ayosha, Azraya, Scurvy, Tag, Rambro. Good to see you all. You're on the final map for the path you took in Fire Emblem. Nice, congrats. Hope you're enjoying it. Oh, I suppose you are if you're up to the final map already. <laughs> Were you thinking of doing another playthrough afterwards? I'm glad you're feeling a bit better today, Ayosha. You went on a date today. Nice. Congrats, Scurvy. Did it go well? Okay, we're going to play some more Ace Attorney Investigations. Oh, no. Probably not. You want to play something else? Ah, yeah. That's understandable. You had sushi and nerded out. Mmm, that sounds good. <laughs> that sounds good. Let's change my theme. I had, I've had this theme for a while. It's a good theme, but I've got some other Ace Attorney themes. I think I have another one for the original trilogy, so... There's a lot of themes for the newer games, but I don't really want to use those until we start playing those. Pixel art, that sounds cute. Oh yes, this is good. Oh, look at that! <laughs> the animated, uh... Animated sprites on the bottom screen, that's adorable! <laughs> Ah, oh, this, is, this is good. Oh, and there's Maggie with a knife with blood on it, I think. A judge. Ah, oh, this is cool. Ah, oh, Pearl with the ball. Ah. Oh. Yeah. We're going to keep this one going. It went well, she is adorable. Nice. I'm glad to hear that, Scurvy. So what game were you thinking of playing next, Ezraya? Okay, so I we're pretty far through case four, but I don't know if we can finish it today because it says end part one. So I'm assuming that end part one and part two are, are were too long to be one segment, so I'm assuming that was um split because of that, so we'll just see how far we can get today. Turn about reminiscence. End part one. Alright. Sweet it in. Ooh. Cool, that sounds like fun. Okay, what did we do last time? Okay, so we Um we found out what Gumshoe was hiding. He was he shared some food with little K. And he was covering for her because he didn't want her to get in trouble. So that's pretty sweet of him. He's 10. It seems she talked with Detective Gumshoe during the recess. He, he's still the main suspect, though. We haven't really found someone more... Um, someone with a better opportunity for the crime, so... He's still the main suspect. Alright. September 10, 5.45pm, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. What is this incredibly overpowering sweet scent? It smells like flowers. Uncle Bad, is this it? Hmm? Isn't the Detective Bad and Kay over there? It looks like she managed to escape the bailiff. <laughs> Uncle Bad, huh? No, that's not quite it. Aw, oh, too bad. But it's so pretty. I think you're still a bit too young to be wearing that. But since you found it, I guess I can let you keep it. Thanks, I'll treasure it always. Those two seem to get along rather well. Ah, oh, here. I've got something else for you. Yay! Thank you, Uncle Bad. Ah, uh -uh, a roll. Earlier, I ate one of these with gummy. Gummy? Oh, you mean gumshoe. Gummy is... He was trying to be nice to me because I was going to get in trouble. And then he got in trouble because he lied to protect me. Gummy. <laughs> I know he didn't kill Daddy. 
Don't cry. Faraday would be sad if you saw you crying. I'm not crying. Okay. Oh, it's the mister from before and the lady too. Yeah, so last time we uh, we talked to the judge who claims he saw that Gumshoe wasn't at his guard post. So that's when he claims that Gumshoe must have been in the room committing the double murder. But uh, we proved that it, the judge didn't see him because he was sitting down on a bench sharing a snack with Kay. Yeah, that, that's pretty much what the last segment was about, was getting at the truth behind what Gumshoe was up to because he was lying about something. But it was a pretty innocent thing, so... Yeah, he's still the main suspect though, so we're trying to figure out who the heck was, uh, who the heck could have done this double murder. Hey Cookies Forever, how are ya? Don't you think it would be a good idea to go home for the time being? You're not involved in the investigation, so it's for the best if you do. Um... Actually, I'm Uncle Bad's assistant. So I'm related to the investigation. Is that so, Detective Bad? Yeah, I guess. What? You were just scolding us like kids to not mess up the crime scene. And now you let this child run free? Why? People are free to investigate things outside of the actual crime scene. You also had a few things you wanted to look into. Got a problem with that? Nah. I don't have a problem with that, but I am curious as to what Miss Yu is looking into. Uncle Bad, I'm gonna go look somewhere else now, okay? Alright, I'm counting on you. Oh, that's right. Hey, mister. Hmm? Yes, what is it? I know Gummy really isn't the bad guy. I mean it. So please, find the real bad guy, okay? I won't forgive whoever did this. But in the absence of the perfect piece of testimony and evidence, there is no one else who could be the true culprit other than Detective Gumshoe. Hmm? She wandered off while I was pondering. <laughs> He's in his own head too much. You're good to see you to enjoy my stream. Nice. In some Edgeworth humour. <laughs> nice. Thanks, cookies. Hope you enjoy the stream. Alright, so we're in defendant lobby number one now. This is where uh, Detective Bad and Miss Yu claimed that they were when they heard the gunshot from the murder. So this is next door to the, where the murder scene is. Let's talk to Francisca. Yes, what is it? What is this smell that has permeated the air? Hmm, it's sweet and flowery, although at this strength I'm likely to suffocate from it. I can't conduct an investigation under these circumstances. We need to open a window and air this room out. I demand that you open a window right now. Hurry! Francisca, one of the windows is already open. I can see that. Hmm, I wonder. Is it just a coincidence that one of the windows in this room is already open too? Hmm. Do. Hi. Better talk to you, I guess. Detective Bad, what exactly was Kay searching for? Nothing that concerns you, boy. Oh, and I suppose it has something to do with Kay? It does, because she's Faraday's daughter. Anyway, hurry up and get to the point. I don't have time to waste. You're just standing around observing us. <laughs> It sounds like he'd rather be left alone. I have something I'd like to confirm with you once again. I don't have anything to say to you. Hmm. Be that as it may, we still have questions that we need answers to. Now then, first of all, what is the overpowering smell that is permeating this room? Upon entering this room, I thought I was going to suffocate. It's that ultra-strong perfume you wears. She spilled some of it. I was having a bad time of it myself. 
I didn't think twice and opened the window. But that smell's still here. Perfume, huh? So the sweet scent in the air is perfume. Well, it's giving off quite a stench. I bet it's some cheap no-name brand. She said, it's a famous brand from overseas. <laughs> Whoops. It's a knockoff. Yes, definitely a knockoff. No disrespect, but she forced one of those bottles on me. Here, little girl, you can have it. Hmm. I was born for a much more expensive and refined perfume. However, seeing as how you just happen to have a spare, I suppose I'll take it. Miles Edgeworth, you will hold on to this bottle without fail. <laughs> Why can't she ever be honest about her wants? <laughs> now we have to carry it around for her. <laughs> Where did I find this game? Uh, I bought it uh, back when it first came out. Where did I buy it from actually? Hang on. Let me check the case. Okay, it's not the Australian version. Might be the US version actually. I probably imported it. I bought a lot of US games because they were way cheaper. Because the DS didn't have region locked games, so it was pretty cheap to import US versions. But yeah, I bought it way back when it came out because I was into the Phoenix Wright trilogy. Yeah, I got into this series back when the first one came out on the DS, or the first port on the DS, because that's when it uh, it became really popular at, the, at that time around the internet. Lots of memes and jokes about uh, about objection and such. <laughs> you mostly ask because you want this game and you need it. Ah, <laughs> yeah, you can uh, you can actually get it on mobile. Actually, there's a mobile port for this one in particular. Yeah, Ace Attorney Investigations. It's on mobile. So is a lot of the other ones too, actually. And of course the HD Trilogy is on pretty much everything. Switch, PC, PS4, Xbox One. So that's good. Yeah, we got her perfume. So now we have the perfume Miss Yu wears. Just fantastic. Is that all you wanted to talk about? If so, I'm going back to investigating. Actually, I still have a few other things I wish to inquire about. <laughs> He's mad. He's scary, but he never actually does anything, so he gets less scary over time. So, you were in this room the entire recess. Like I said, I made a call to the precinct to get that big lug down here. But other than that... I was waiting for the recess to end in here. At least your story is consistent. Earlier, you stated that you were in this lobby with Miss Yu. Yeah, I ran into her in the hallway. She said she wanted to talk to me about something, so we came in here. Then what you're saying is that until Detective Gumshoe's arrival, you and Miss Yu were in two different locations? Hmm, guess I am. Interesting. Speaking of that lawyer, she seems to have a great dislike for you. Oh. <laughs> Let's see. Miss Yu is the sister of the victim of the KG-8 incident. And, as I recall, Detective Bad was the lead detective on the case. I wonder if the reason for her disdain isn't simply because you failed to guard Cece, but because you were the lead detective on the case. You knew? Hmm. I also know that today's trial involving the Kadopian Embassy staff member is being referred to as the second KG-8 incident. Now then, Detective, I believe it's time you were honest with me and told me the truth behind your relationship with Miss Yu and Mr. Faraday and the KG-8 incident. If you already know that much, I guess it'd be alright to tell you. Now then, I'd like to ask you a few questions about the KG-8 incident. It's not exactly a happy story. Other than the people who were directly involved, you two will be the first to hear what I'm about to tell. Mm. <laughs> it's a lollipop! 
somber music starts, serious moment, and then we discover he's been chewing on a lollipop this whole time. <laughs> this game's great. <laughs> the honest truth behind the KG-8 incident. <laughs> yeah, all of them are, all the ones that have been officially released in English anyway are on mobile. Faraday, you and I. As you already know, we three were involved with the KG-8 incident. Faraday and I, we were originally on the trail of a smuggling ring. Oh, were you now? Okay. This smuggling ring has been involved in like every case so far in this game, so... These are all tied together, these cases. You mean the smuggling case involving one of the Amano Group's secretaries? Hmm. That trial was just a front. A facade? Yeah. But the case became tainted. All because the witness who was going to testify about the Amano Group's ties to the smuggling ring, CCU, was killed. Then what became of the secretary who was arrested? His name was Colin DeVore. Hmm. To be honest, the guy didn't know a thing about the smuggling ring, but he confessed to knowing about it anyway. Devore was probably being intimidated by the big boss man. Just another scapegoat. Wow. That guy just got... Wow. I feel really bad for this Colin. Hey King Crawley. Welcome. The boss man of the Amano group. He can't seriously mean Mr. Ernest Amano. That can't be right. It's probably just Detective Bad's personal hypothesis. What is he trying to do, suspecting Mr. Amano of being involved with smuggling? I suppose it would have been quite difficult to secure an acquittal after he confessed. But the man who killed CCU, Manny Cochin, was a completely different person. But since he's already been acquitted once of her murder... Mr. Faraday, how could you have let him go? If I remember correctly, I heard that Mr. Faraday had an important piece of evidence stolen from him. That wasn't Faraday's fault. It was mine. I wasn't vigilant enough. Faraday, Cece, I was supposed to protect them both. Miss Yu did mention that as well, about how Detective Bad was supposed to guard her sister. But even I, who was supposed to protect them, I fell into their trap. What kind of a trap? Hm. The holes in this jacket are a testament to that trap. Y you mean you were fired upon? You, you were shot at that many times in one gunfight? No. Only about half of these are from that case. But the reason I continue to wear this jacket is to remind myself of the lessons I learned from the KG-8 incident. I see. I couldn't protect CCU, and the suspect was found not guilty. We had hit a brick wall, as far as the law was concerned. And that's when she came to the courtroom, the victim's sister. That's when I first met Callisto Yu. Okay, we're getting a lot of info here. About when you first met Miss Yu. It was on the day the verdict of the KG-8 incident was handed down, was it not? Yes. Faraday and I, we apologised to her from the bottom of our hearts. It was all we could do. But... Just saying you're sorry won't bring my sister back, she said. And then she gave me a hard slap across the face. Well, she certainly had a lot of self-control to stop at just a slap. If it was me... Not even a hundred lashes would have been punishment enough. I suppose not. You said it herself. That she never wanted to see either of us ever again. 
There's something really cool here is that his speed of talking keeps changing. Like he usually talks really slowly, but every now and then he talks quickly. It's kind of a cool little character detail. But after that, you've seen her many times over, correct? Yeah. Faraday and I. Even after the KG-8 incident had come to a close, we continued to hunt down the smuggling ring and got involved in a variety of cases. But it was no use. We cracked so many different cases. But the result was always the same. We couldn't find the real mastermind behind the ring. Is the ring really that big? It was in the pursuit of the ring that we met you once again. It was during another trial related to the smuggling ring. Faraday was the prosecutor, and I, as the lead detective, took to the witness stand. You, she appeared out of the blue as the defense attorney. Her client was related to the smuggling ring, and she was defending them. Yeah. You was pursuing the ring as best she could as a lawyer. I think she defended Rail this time, for the same reason. Come to think of it, Miss Yu did say something to the same effect. I have my own agenda. I'm still on the hunt for leads regarding the KG-8 incident, alright? And for that, you have not a single qualm about defending a known killer? Don't put words in my mouth, I said no such thing. The only way I had to get close to Mr. Rell was to be his lawyer. I had no intention of covering for him, ever. So don't you dare suggest I was going to. Hmm, it doesn't matter what her reason was. Helping a criminal is just despicable. You're so naive, little girl. I could have stolen this lollipop from you. That's how naive you are. How dare you insult the daughter of a Von Karma? Just like us, you felt that she had hit the limit of what the law could do. That's all. The law is merely a tool. There is no limit to it, only the skill of the craftsman. You two are still too young, but one day you'll know what I mean. But enough sidetracking. What matters is that we met you again in pursuit of the smuggling ring. That's all. Hmm. So what was your relation to Mr. Faraday? You even seem to know Kay fairly well. I met him when he was a rookie prosecutor, known him ever since. And Kay, I've known her since the day she was born. Faraday and I, we cracked quite a few cases together. Hmm, but you two seem to have made no progress at all in the Yatagarazu case. Did we touch a nerve? I only have one thing to say to you. No one knew more about the Yadagarasu than me and Faraday. That's why I was called upon to testify in today's trial. To prove that Rill was not the real Yadagarasu. Which I would have done if he hadn't turned around and accused Faraday. After the accusation, I was asked to testify, but this time to prove or disprove the accusation. But I guess I won't be doing that either. I sense that there's more to that statement than meets the eye. Perhaps a bit more digging in the, into the Yatagarasu is what's necessary. This is a very complicated case, I must say. I'm having trouble keeping it all straight in my head. You claim to know much about the Yatagarasu. Would you care to share what you know with me? Hmm. What you two should be looking for right now is proof of murderous intent towards Faraday and Rell. I agree, which is exactly why I'm asking you about the Yatagarasu. What? 
the KG-8 incident and this second KG-8 incident. Both of these cases are tied to the smuggling ring. And in both of these cases, the witness who was to testify about the ring was murdered. However, there is one point in which they differ, and that is the presence or absence of the great thief Yatagarasu. Mr. Rowe claimed to be the Yatagarasu, however, in the middle of the trial, he suddenly declared Mr. Faraday to be the real Yatagarasu. Then during the recess, they were both killed. Don't you find that to be the least bit odd? Mars Edgeworth, stop beating around the bush and just spit it out already! I believe that there must be some reason that the two men suspected of being the Yatagarasu were both killed at the same time. A reason, huh? And so, in order to catch Mr. Faraday's and Mr. Rowe's cold-blooded killer, I feel that I need to learn as much as I can about the Yatagarasu. If it will help you solve this case... Then I'll tell you. I'll tell you the reason why we've never caught the Yatagarasu. What was that sudden outburst for? You almost made me whip you by accident! No, <laughs> It still accidentally whipped me anyway. There are three main reasons why the Yatagarasu will always be one step ahead. First, the Yatagarasu always knows the exact location of the target object. Second, the Yatagarasu always knows exactly how to disarm the security system. Third, the Yatagarasu doesn't leave a single shred of evidence behind, ever. I see. So those are the Yatagarasu's special traits. Sounds like an incredibly elusive thief. The Yatagarasu has never been caught on tape, never tries to draw anyone's attention, and would never do something as lowbrow as commit murder. That's how I knew that Rill wasn't the real Yatagarasu right away. But you can't use that sort of logic on its own to prove that he wasn't. Huh. Listen, little girl, I'm not done talking yet. What's different about this time was that evidence related to the smuggling ring was sent to the police. And the sender was none other than the one who infiltrated the Kodopian embassy, the Yatagarasu. The Yatagarasu sent the evidence? Until now, the Yatagarasu would always publicise any corrupt dealings through the mass media. But not this time. The evidence this time was something only Faraday and I, and a select few others, knew about. In that case, how can you be so sure that it was the Yatagarasu who sent it? That's easy. A special card that only the Yatagarasu uses was attached. That's how I can be so sure. And just what sort of card is it? Here, take a look at this article. Whenever the Yatagarasu wants to publicise something, a white card is sent along with the stolen information. Wait, so this card was just in the newspaper? Then anyone knows about it then, <laughs> if it wasn't kept secret. But, when we questioned Rill about what was sent along with the white card, Rill had no idea what it was. Ah, and that's how Detective Bad knew that Mr. Rill was a phony. Thank you very much. I have a much better understanding of the Yatagarasu now. Okay, so there, there is something else that's sent as well. That wasn't publicised. Okay, that makes more sense. Hmm. Excuse me, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes? His Honour would like to transfer the evidence from today's trial over to you. So if you could please head over to the courtroom, it'd be much appreciated, sir. Understood. I'll be there shortly. Detective Bad, what does the law mean to you? Finding the answer to that question is the only reason I'm still alive. Hmm. I became a prosecutor to find the answer to that question myself. And to play a part in ensuring that all criminals everywhere are found guilty.
District Court, courtroom number three. That was a lot of information. <laughs> we just got started and just, just dump information on our head. Oh, it's you, Mr. Edgeworth. <sighs> it appears that his honour is still a bit dispirited. For the first time today, I experienced what it was like to stand up at the witness stand. Oh, I now have a greater appreciation for just how hard it is to give testimony. Well, there's no reason for you to be at all depressed about it, Your Honour. As a judge, no one expects you to think about anything other than the verdict. Francisca, there is no need to further depress His Honour. But I'm not trying to, Miles. Your Honour. Uh. Your Honour, I've come to collect the evidence that was to be transferred to me. He... Your Honour. The evidence. I... Your Honour. Oh. Y you. Yes, can I help you? Hey, Bessio, you're welcome. Does the judge ever age? Apparently not. <laughs> Apparently not. I'd like to collect the evidence now, sir. Your Honour, do you think you can stay focused long enough to at least do your job? Y yes, I'm sorry. And I would, except that the defence attorney has yet to arrive. She's busy with the investigation, so let's keep this brief, shall we? Very well. In that case, please confirm that all the pieces of evidence are present. Furthermore, the evidence that was used in the murders of Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell are also included, so please go ahead and use them in your investigation into their case. Understood, Your Honour. The pieces of evidence that were used in the murder of those two men. This could be a very good chance for me to find new leads regarding their case, and maybe even something that will finally lead me to the truth. I've placed all of the evidence over at the prosecutor's bench for you. I see. Thank you very much. I will go and confirm that they are all accounted for. What's this over here? At the defence bench. Evidence that Miss Yu prepared is just sitting here on this table. You know you can't just walk off with it, right? Of course I do. Miss Yu must have been caught off guard by her client's sudden accusation. I wonder how she would have defended Mr. Rowe in that case if he was still alive. It would appear that the judge is still a bit dispirited. Stop that! You're being so depressing! Whoa! You should listen to her, Your Honour, before things go from bad to worse. Although it can't really get much worse for him, other than to be whipped by her. <laughs> oh, can we leave? I kind of wanted to look around that other room, but we got kicked out. Oh, hey, it's Kay. Oh, sorry, mister. I'm a little busy right now. Doing what? Um, well, I'm looking for something. Uncle Bad told me to, so that's what I'm going to do. Let's go. I don't want to interfere with the girl, lest Detective Bad get angry. Yes, agreed. I'll go check out the evidence later. I want to look around this room. You can play as Edgeworth. Thought he was Phoenix's rival. Yeah, this game's all about Edgeworth. This is Ace Attorney Investigations. And uh, there's a sequel to this. Both of them are about playing as Edgeworth. Which is pretty cool. Bum, 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 bum. Let's take a look around. I can still smell that perfume, even with the window being left open to air out the room. Are you sure they didn't just forget to close the window, Miles? Hmm. Yes, well, I hadn't thought of that. You've still got a long way to go if you think you can best me, Miles Edgeworth. Okay, I was probably supposed to get that dialogue before I talked to Detective Bad and he claims that he opened the window. <laughs> that expensive painting is ill-suited to be hanging on the wall of this room. I wonder if a guard detail should be placed on it. Why do you say that? Well, a desperate, low-paid detective might make off with it someday. You never know. 
she may be thinking about hiring a guard. But it's obvious she isn't factoring in that guard's salary whatsoever. <laughs> what an incredibly strong-scented herbal tea. I fear that, more than being relaxing, this scent may make one a bit heady instead. Bum, 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 bum. You definitely want to play this now? Yeah, this is pretty fun actually, I'm really liking this. Apparently the sequel is really good. Uh, it didn't get an official translation, but there's a uh, there's a third party translation patch you can use. There's a fan translation. Yeah, apparently the sequel is one of the best games in the whole series, so I'm looking forward to playing that too. This television is the same model as the one in Defendant Lobby number two. Looks like the two rooms are basically the same in terms of layout and supplies. Yes. Hmm, the two rooms are basically the same, huh? Hmm. Bum, bum. I can see down into the courthouse courtyard from here. What is that mess supposed to be? It's like an optical illusion. I believe it's supposed to be postmodern in design. More like thoughtlessness in design. I can't disagree there. <laughs> Save. You saw KFJ stream the sequel? It's great. Nice. Yeah, Ace Attorney Investigations 2. The Japanese name is... What's the Japanese name? Gyakuten Kenji 2, I think? Yeah, the main games are called Gyakuten Saiban, and that, which means like Turnabout Courtroom, I think. And uh, this sub-series, this spin-off series is called Gyakuten Kenji, because uh, Kenji Mitsurugi is Edgeworth's Japanese name. Yeah. Hello, can we talk to you again? You're in the way, boy. Move. You look terribly busy. However, I was wondering what you're busy with. Just looking for something. It's got nothing to do with you. What is with your terrible attitude? I guess I'm out of luck. I really should get back to what I need to do anyway. Bum, bum. Plant! This decorative plant's leaves are shinier than the ones in the on the plant in lobby number two. That's probably because it's next to the windows where it's easy to photosynthesize. You may be right. Plus, the curtains are always drawn in lobby number two. The caretakers of this courthouse don't think enough about the plants, do they? That's because they're the courthouse's caretakers, not a bunch of botanists. <laughs> no. Bum, 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 bum. Mars Edgeworth, prepare me some change. And what if I refuse? Well, aren't we stingy? I'm shocked that you're unwilling to part with a few coins. Think what you will. Besides, we can't go around changing the state of the crime scene. Hm. You don't have to treat me like a child. I already knew that, you know. Oh, then why did you bother asking for change in the first place? Hmm, new dialogue. This vending machine is stocked with a variety of base food products. Yet, despite their banality, they're priced extraordinarily high. I have no interest in anything that is unrelated to the case, Miles. Hold on, I wouldn't dismiss it yet. Clues are often found in the most surprising of places. No matter how insignificant it may seem, we should give all things due consideration. I suppose. In that case, Miles Edgeworth, you will buy me one of those ham sandwiches. <laughs> For evidence's sake, of course. I believe that preserving the crime scene takes precedence, Francisca. <laughs> The bench is covered with ants. The janitor is going to have a tough time with this. It would appear that they're coming in through the open window up there. Ants are unusual creatures. We can learn so much from their diligence and zeal. It's quite a bit of new new dialogue now. Crime scene. This decorative plant's foliage is quite nice. It's actually soothing to be around it. Hmm, perhaps I should purchase one for my room. Was this table here all along? I suppose so. Objection! Well, clearly it's out of place. When you take the sofa into consideration, that table is much too tall. I get the impression the two are not meant to be used as a set, Francisca. D uh, I knew that. 
Uh, it seems she's lost her calm sense of judgment in her eagerness to defeat me. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. That is one tiny TV. Detective Gumshoe was rather shocked at this and said it is huge compared to his own. Ha! Huh. Anything you compare with something he owns will always seem grandiose. Speaking of grandiose, I'd say that ego of yours could use a little deflating. I suppose it's impossible to enter or exit through these windows thanks to these bars. I suppose you're right. Actually, that's not true. I bet a person of small stature could slip in. Francisca, would you care to help me test my theory? <laughs> Did you just call her short again? You're gonna get whipped. <laughs> Drat, I must remember to be more tactful around the vertically challenged. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they didn't bother to give her a different uh, objection voice, which is kind of a shame. She should sound younger. Yeah, well. The curtains are shut tight. The colour of those curtains is rather gloomy. For a place where people's lives are in the balance, they could have chosen to hang something a little more cheery, you know? I know. However, I think the designer had more things to think about than the lobbies. Hmm. Well, as a Von Karma. I would afford any location related to the law extra attention to detail. A bit obsessive, aren't we? Dun, dun. I wonder if the killer used these plastic bags in a flash of inspiration. With that detective? I somehow doubt he's that quick-witted. So you're saying that this crime was thought out in advance? With that detective? I somehow doubt he's capable of making such a complex plan. Francisca. When will you learn to take responsibility for your statements? Yeah, hang on. Can we look at the couch? I don't think so. Oh, we can. You must be tired, Francisca. Care to take a short break on that sofa? Surely you jest. Me? Sit on that tiny, dirty, disgusting thing? But that detective said he could sleep all 25 hours of the day on this. Bum, 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 bum. Talk to her. It looks like your debut trial fizzled out thanks to it being declared a mistrial. Too bad. But now you can take your time bidding the evidence they transferred to you goodbye. Hmm. It's much too early to show off the pieces that were given to me. Oh? How do you figure? Two of the pieces were used to kill Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rowe. Naturally, having all of them makes it easier for me to examine them more thoroughly. I... Uh, yes of course. Don't tell me. You forgot about that fact, didn't you, Francisca? I don't have to answer the char characteristically foolish question of a foolish fool. Now, hurry up and check the evidence already. Trust me, I will. In due time. Once I finish exp uh, re-inspecting everything from, for a new dialogue. <laughs> I don't believe it. This judge has it all wrong. The star of the courtroom isn't him. It's me, Francisca von Karma. As long as she doesn't turn evil, I suppose I can live with just another megalomaniac. <laughs> that extinguisher looks like it would be good at extinguishing any bad memories. With a solid smack across the back of a person's head, are you saying you have memories you'd like erased at your tender age? I am perfect. Therefore, I don't have anything I want to erase from my mind. I was talking about you, Miles Edgeworth. I have no intention of revisiting the past. Oh? That's too bad. Well, if you ever want my help erasing memories, I'll be sure to ask. Dun, 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 dun. Ah, they fixed the water fountain. It appears I won't be drinking out of this until it's been repaired. Okay, they just turned off the water. <laughs> if you want a drink of water, just find a tap. It's all the same. No, actually, the water from this is apparently something special. There was a man here who was practically bathing in it. I know. Ah, then obviously we are both thinking the same thing. I suppose we'll just have to wait then. Yes. Miles Edgeworth. Yes. What is the meaning of this bulletin board? I've seen this dialogue. 
I'll reread it though. Why are there so few trials posted? Hmm, it would appear that the entire week is devoted to Mr. Ralph's trial. Is the crime rate really that low in this country? Or maybe the police lack the proper motivation to get out there and catch the criminals. I'm afraid I can't comment on that. However, I can say I have my doubts about the younger detectives. Sounds to me like they're in need of a stricter hand, and I'll start my discipline regiment with that pathetic, filthy coded detective. Oh, I feel bad for the big guy, and yet I can find no suitable reason to stop her. I can't expect the bench. Yeah. Hello. What's the matter, officer? I've been standing here for forever, sir, and I really need to go to the bathroom. Why don't you just make a quick trip? Oh, yes. I've seen this dialogue too. And this one's just sleeping. Nothing to report. Yep. <laughs> Are we ever going to see this thing transform? <laughs> yeah, someone made a model of the courthouse, and uh, apparently they'd made it a transformer. <laughs> it transforms into something, but we we don't know what. Okay, nothing really new in this room. the witness stand. I'll make sure that each and every person that ever stands here will be found guilty. There are others besides the defendant that stand at this podium, you know. I don't care, just make sure you never end up standing at one of these, or you'll be sorry. I'll keep that in mind. All right, let's get our evidence. So this is the evidence related to today's Kadopian Embassy trial from Mr. Faraday's bag. You mean the evidence bag that was on the table in lobby number two, right? Yes. Finally, we can now take a look at the evidence itself, and not just data about them. Let's be sure to thoroughly examine them while we have the time. Agreed. I want to take a good look at all of the evidence from the embassy murder too. And why is that? Because I still don't fully understand what today's trial was about. Don't point your crop at me just because you don't know something. And don't you try to order me around just because Papa chose you today. I see someone is still sore about not being picked by Mr. Von Karma. It's also... real to see the knife up close. So, we have the knife, the gun, an envelope. And what's this organizer doing here? Oh, that's right. I completely forgot to tell you. About what, Your Honor? They found Mr. Faraday's personal organizer inside that evidence bag of his. Detective Bad requested it be passed along to you. He said it would help the investigation. Detective Bad said that. What a strange stroke of luck. Well, never look a gift horse in the mouth. We might as well flip through it too. Let's look at the gun first. This gun. It was originally used to kill the Godopian Embassy staff member. When the crime was reported, the responding police found Mr. Rell still holding it, which led to his immediate arrest. And then, this gun took the original shooter's life. How ironic. Indeed. There doesn't seem to be anything else we can learn from this piece of evidence. It's the knife that was used to kill Mr. Faraday. Who would have thought that such a beautiful piece of art could be used for such a cruel act? And it's never crossed your mind that you use your riding crop for the wrong purpose? <laughs> Notice he was he didn't say that out loud though. <laughs> Mr. Faraday's organizer. It appears he was in the habit of using it. It looks like he wrote his strategy for getting Mr. Rell convicted down in here. 
I have collected the evidence I need to prove that Rill was the killer. Between the handgun Rill had on him when he was arrested and the surveillance tape, I should be able to prove that he was the one. It appears that Mr. Faraday honestly believed that Mr. Rill was the killer in the case. The sound of his handgun going off was recorded with superb clarity on the surveillance video. I also have evidence that I can use to prove that Rill is not the real Yatagarasu. And it would also appear that he had proof that Mr. Rill was not the Yatagarasu. No matter how he may try to play it, as long as I have the Yatagarasu's key, I can prove he's a phony. If I present it to him in court, it should clear everything up. Hmm, and he apparently also had a very definitive piece of evidence. Hmm. It's been a long battle. I hope this I hope that this will finally bring it to an end. Yes, I believe that Mr. Faraday was well prepared to discredit any claim Mr. Rail may have made about being the real Yatagata suit. And he had a way to prove that Mr. Rail was the guilty party in the embassy murder. This organizer is a clue straight from Mr. Faraday. I'll have to take my time and give it a thorough read later. Hmm. Yatagarasu's key. I wonder what that is. We haven't found anything like that on him. Look, there's a picture stuck between these pages here. Hmm. Ah. It appears to be a key. And a rather ornate one at that. Just look at the design on the handle. The craftsmanship is superb. Could this be the Yatagarasu's key Mr. Faraday mentioned in his organiser? The Yatagarasu's key. Detective Bad said something earlier. What's different about this time was that evidence related to the smuggling ring was sent to the police. And the sender was none other than the one who infiltrated the Kadopian embassy. The Yatagarasu. The Yatagarasu sent the evidence. Until now, the Yatagarasu would always publicise any corrupt dealings through the mass media. But not this time. The evidence this time was something only Faraday and I, and a select few others, knew about. Mr. Faraday must have been trying to keep this secret key safe. As the prosecutor on both the Yatagarasu and smuggling ring cases, that's to be expected. Hmm. Hmm, that's odd. What is it? Mr. Faraday didn't mention anything about a knife in his organiser. That certainly is odd. The weapon that was used to kill the Kadopian Embassy staff member was the gun. But if that's the case, then where did the knife that was used to murder Mr. Faraday come from? Isn't it obvious? It was brought into the courthouse by Mr. Rail. That's the only logical conclusion, right? No, because it's not that easy to smuggle a weapon like that in here. Every person who enters the courthouse doors is checked thoroughly for contraband. Furthermore, the suspect was handcuffed, making it impossible for him to bring a knife as large as this inside. In that case, how do you suppose this knife ended up inside the courthouse? I need to think carefully here. There is nothing related to the knife written anywhere in Mr. Faraday's organiser. However, it is a fact that this knife came from Mr. Faraday's evidence bag. Conversely, there is one item listed in Mr. Faraday's organiser that no one has claimed to have seen today. So in order to solve this mystery, I believe I will need to take another good look at the evidence. Miles Edgeworth, can I take the fact that you have yet to answer me to mean that you don't have an answer for me? Actually, I do know the answer, Francisca. What? Then what is it? One of the pieces of evidence we've been holding has been hiding a secret of its own. And it was through this piece of evidence that the knife was brought into the courthouse. Yeah. Hmm. We've got a lot of evidence now. <laughs> okay, I thought maybe it had something to do with... Yeah, the knife. There's got to be something to do with the knife, because... The knife is 
we don't know what's up with this thing, where it came from. And the, the handle kind of reminds me of the key. But also maybe my, it's my badge. I don't see how that answers my question at all. Every piece of evidence has some secretive aspect about it. Oh, then I demand to know what the secret is to this one. Alright, maybe there is no secret to this one. I need to think carefully here. There is nothing related to the knife written anywhere in Mr. Faraday's organizer. <laughs> yeah, thanks game. <laughs> I figured it out. <laughs> However, it is a fact that this knife came from Mr. Faraday's evidence bag. Yep. <laughs> the game's just spilling it out for me. The knife was definitely brought in somehow. Or the key. Yeah, I, th I think the knife and the key are the same thing, so... Can we get a better look at this thing? We can. Uh. I mean... Shrug. Present. Yeah, we didn't take any damage. That was good. The, this Yotagarusu's key Mr. Faraday mentions in his organizer. This is how the knife was brought into the courthouse. You're not making any sense, Miles Edgeworth. Hm. You just need to look a bit closer, Francisco, to see what I mean. Don't the colour and ornamentation of the key's handle remind you of anything? They do remind me of the knife. Very good. Both the Yatagarusu's key in this photo and the murderous knife have this very unique design on their handles. Furthermore, even though Mr. Faraday mentions the Yatagarusu's key, the only object we found at the crime scene was the knife. You, you don't seriously mean to say... It appears that you've finally caught up. And yes, I do mean to say that these two pieces are, in fact, one and the same. But that's impossible! <laughs> Even if that is what you believe, we should still investigate this possibility. <laughs> now then, let us examine this knife in a little more detail. God, he's such a smug bugger, isn't he? <laughs> there. We're in a motorcycle driving down the road. Don't mind that. This game seems to have places where you can't take damage. I guess that's where developers determine logic leaps to be too hard for most. There, yeah, that might be true, yeah. Hey, son of Tukai, welcome. There is young Edgeworth, yes. <laughs> yep. It's the weapon that was used to kill Mr. Faraday. The handle and the blade itself both have beautiful designs worked into them. Look, there's even a flower-shaped design in this gold section here. If this hadn't been used as a tool for murder, I'd want it for myself. She seems to be drawn to the embellishments. Too bad this isn't mine to give. Ah, there's a little button here. Is that... yeah, that's just the tip of the knife. Uh -huh. I can't believe it turned into a key! To think there was such a trick to this thing! So the weapon used to kill Mr. Faraday is actually the key the Yatagarusu stole. This piece of information is more critical than anything we've learned up until now. Yatagarusu's key! Nice. You just got in? Okay. Yeah, we started off this segment where... Uh... We've got, we've been transferred all the evidence from the case that the, uh, that Mr. Faraday was doing. And we're having a look at it now. Also, we got told a bunch of info from Detective Bad, and I can't even remember everything he told us. <laughs> a lot of info about the, uh, KG-8 incident and such. Frankly, I'm shocked. Mr. Faraday only mentioned the key aspect in, of this piece of evidence in his organizer. It's possible that even he had no idea the key was hiding a knife blade inside. But if that's true, then only someone who knew about the key to knife trick could have killed Mr. Faraday. Even among law enforcement, this key was top secret. 
were looking for someone who knew even more about the key than even Mr. Faraday. Meaning that the only person it could be is the one who sent the key in the first place. The great thief Yatagarasu. Then maybe Mr. Rell really was the Yatagarasu. And he was the one who killed Mr. Faraday. Isn't that one possible scenario? No, not really, especially since Mr. Faraday was absolutely convinced that Mr. Rell was not the Yatagarasu. Besides, as Detective Bad said earlier, But when we questioned Rell about what was sent along with the white card, Rell had no idea what it was. I see. Alright then, I guess the person who knows the trick behind this key is someone else, and that person is the real Yatagarasu. Hmm, it seems that this key is truly the key to solving this case. Nice pun, Edgeworth. <laughs> Alright, now what's in this envelope? So when the knife key breaks, who do you go to? A locksmith? Can he fix a knife? <laughs> That's a good point. Good night, Azraya. No worries. Have a good sleep. I took a quick look through these documents before the trial started. Well, I wasn't even afforded the opportunity to skim it. Hmm. I suppose I should explain it to you then. Yes, you should. Perfectly and in its entirety, if you please. On the night of September 8th, an embassy staff member was killed in front of the embassy. The staff member died of shock due to being shot in the heart. Mac Rill was brought, that night, brought in that night as a suspect and thoroughly questioned, because the murder weapon was found on him, for which he was arrested on the spot. A simpleton of a man, that's what he was? Hmm. Perhaps he was, for the weapon wasn't the only incriminating evidence we had. Mr. Rill was caught in the act on film by a security camera. He was an even bigger simpleton than I'd thought. I can't believe he didn't notice a security camera. The Kadopian Embassy security system is supposedly very well designed. He may have simply not been aware that there was a camera in the area. So, have you seen the contents of the video for yourself? Yes, the surveillance video the security camera took was played during the trial by Mr. Faraday. You can clearly identify Mr. Rell on it. Even the sound of the gunshot was crystal clear. So the footage included sound, huh? I don't think I'd ever want to see the moment of someone's death in real life. Me neither. That's odd. We're short one piece of evidence. And the piece that's missing is the surveillance video that was played in court. The surveillance video? How could a piece of evidence just disappear? Where did it go? The video showing the moment in which Mr. Rell committed the murder. Where could it have gone indeed? Hmm, so that's probably what the real killer took. Not sure why they would take it, but yeah. Your Twitter name is Azraya the Worse, since Worse is pronounced like Worse. Ah, okay. <laughs> Are you done with your inspection of the evidence? Yes, I'm finished. However, Your Honour, I am missing a single piece of prosecu prosecutorial evidence. Your Honour, were you derelict in your duties? <laughs> Stop blaming him, it's not his fault. He's, he already feels bad enough. <laughs> but what? No, I dare not lick my duties. <laughs> what do you take me for? No, Your Honour, the most important piece of evidence in today's trial. The surveillance video is not amongst the evidence you laid out for me. Hmm. But I brought Mr. Faraday's whole bag with me from the crime scene. Maybe the tape is still somewhere at the crime scene? There's something wrong here. Something about this missing piece of evidence. It would appear that for me to find the answers I seek, I will have to pay another visit to the scene of the crime. Detect defendant lobby number two. Six PM. Oh, hello. Who's that? Hmm. That hair looks a bit familiar. Six PM. District court. Defendant lobby number two. Hmm. 
That's Detective Bad. But who is he with? I've never seen that officer before. So, did you find it? No, not yet. And I've looked everywhere. I see. Well then, please continue with the search. Understood. I'll continue the search. Ha! So you're the one running this show. Prosecutors like you shouldn't even be allowed at crime scenes. How dare you? Just who do you think you are? Bye. <laughs> what was that all about? And who was that man just now? Whoever he was, I've never seen a more impudent officer in my life. Does he even know that we're standing right here behind him? I know you're standing right behind me. What do you want, kids? It looks like you were paying attention after all. Of course I was. I have eyes in the back of my head. Ah, so that mirror isn't for vanity's sake. It's for him to keep an eye out on who or what is behind him at all times. So tell me, Detective Bad, who was that rude man just now? The guy came here from the Republic of Zengfa to study. He's Agent Lang. He's trying everything he can to revive the lost honor of his family. He's traveling the world to study different philosophies of detainment from scratch. By visiting various police departments around the world, he has a lot of dedication. He's still just a rookie cop, but I sense a strong grudge of some sort from him. The guy's more useful than Gumshoe, even if he is rude. Well, he sure has a lot of guts to come to this country and give prosecutors a hard time. I agree. However, I can think of one young lady that statement also applies to. <laughs> anyway, what was that agent looking for, Detective Bad? Earlier, that little girl was poking around in lobby number one as well. Like I said before, it's got nothing to do with the two of you. Hmm. I highly doubt that it has nothing to do with me. Hmm. Fine. If this is a game I must play, then I will take this opportunity to draw out what he's been hiding and what happened in this room straight from him. And then we walk away. <laughs> Already inspected everything, so might as well talk to him. Truly, we'll never see him again. Definitely not. <laughs> Judging by the bullet holes in the mirror, he probably got attacked in the back a lot. Yeah, actually, that's a that's a good point. Earlier, you were in lobby number one, and now you're here in lobby number two. You are quite the busy man, Detective Bad. Multiple returns to a crime scene brings about success. That's what we detectives say. I see. In that case, you wouldn't mind if I asked about what happened again, correct? I don't have anything left to say to you, boy. No, boy? You'll see. I will draw my answer from you, one way or another. Would it kill you to help us even a tiny bit in our investigation? I gave Faraday's notebook to the judge earlier. That's help enough, don't you think? Arr! Please, we are asking you for just a bit more of your cooperation. Don't push me, kid. Check out this cool key knife thing. A secret ability to change into key the Yatagodosu sent. Detective Bad. Did you know of the existence of the item in this photograph? Hmm. Of course I did. It's my job to know everything related to the Yatagara suitcase. In that case, let me ask you something. Did you know that the knife that killed Mr. Faraday and this Yatagara suit's key are one and the same? What? That's impossible. It looks like he didn't know after all. This piece of evidence, which we call the Yatagarasu's key, is actually a well camouflage knife. Mr. Faraday was planning to use this Yatagarasu's key to prove.
prove that Mr. Rill was not the Rill you had to go to see. Isn't that correct? I guess so. However, Mr. Faraday had no idea that it was, in fact, a knife. Yeah, I have to admit, neither one of us knew that fact. And if neither one of us knew, then no one in law enforcement knew either. How did we miss something as big as this? I noticed that since a little while ago, you appear to be searching for something. I presume that this key is what you were searching for. Yeah, that's right. And why were you searching for it? Because I promised Faraday. I promised that I'd protect that key with my life. But after he was killed, the key disappeared from Faraday's evidence bag. Who would have thought that the key is what took Faraday's life? Detective Bad. So that we may find the truth, please testify for me once more. Alright. But it doesn't matter how many times I tell you about what happened. Nothing will change. Hmm. Detective Bad. I ask that you please testify once more about what happened in lobby number two and what you experienced in lobby number one. My answer is still the same. And this is the last time I'm going to do this. That's fine, because I only need this one last time to clear everything up and find the truth behind this case. Okay, I assume if I talked to him before, he was he was just going to say no. And then Edgeworth would be like, oh, we have to get a reaction out of him. And then we have to show him the knife. All right. Detective Bad's movements. I was in lobby number one, talking with you. We were talking about some trivial things. I heard the gunshot, right before the trial was about to reconvene. When we heard it, you and I immediately dashed out into the hallway together. I saw Gumshoe goofing around there, and then we all ran into lobby number two. It sounds like the exact same story he told us before. Indeed. However, I feel that we have yet to draw out all the information that we can. I'm still completely stumped as to who the actual killer is and how they... How did they get out of that room without Gumshoe seeing them? Hmm. We'll find out. Detective Bad's movements. I was in lobby number one, talking with you. Why did Miss Yu choose lobby number one? Answer me! Who knows? She just said that she had something she wanted to talk to me about. And we walked into lobby number one together. That's all. So his answer remains the same as before, I see. Wait, that's different though. Because before she told him that uh, Faraday was in the other room with the defendant and didn't want to be interrupted. Hmm. We were talking about some trivial things. I was hoping you could expand on what exactly you were discussing with Miss Yu. Trivial stuff. It was nothing important. That's for me to decide. Alright, I suppose that's for him to decide. <laughs> Moving on then. <laughs> Edgeworth just gave up there. <laughs> hey Dashiku, hey Shizzle, welcome. It's obviously the judge, come on. <laughs> I heard the gunshot, right before the trial was about to reconvene. Until you heard the gunshot, did you notice anything else that was out of the ordinary? I didn't hear any other strange sounds. Until that gunshot. If the gunshot Detective Bad heard was really the one from the murder, that would give that other piece of evidence an entirely different meaning. I ask that you please amend your testimony with that statement just now. Sure. So he didn't hear the balloon popping. That's interesting. You love how even this young he was 
he was trying to be he was trying to extract as boldly as he did later only this time he was less threatening yeah <laughs> that's true I'll come back to this part because that's the important part when we heard it you and I immediately dashed out into the hallway together and why did the two of you dash out into the hallway straight away because we clearly heard the sound of a gunshot and we knew it came from somewhere nearby and how did you know that it was a gunshot? Huh. <laughs> in my line of work, you hear enough of them to know. I suppose it's only natural for a detective to know what a real gunshot sounds like. But given the circumstances, the only person I could think of whose life would have been in danger was Faraday. That's why I ran out into the hallway right away and headed for where he was. Yeah, he's been shot at a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so Shizzle, um, we've learnt a lot so far. I suppose probably the most important thing we've learnt, though, is that this knife that Faraday had, it actually turns into a key. Let's turn it into the key. Woo! Yeah, it turns into a key that was a uh, that it's proof that it's from the real Yatagarasu, the real thief. Yeah, so we're trying to we're speculating that whoever knew about the secret of this knife is the person who actually committed the murder. Because it, yeah, it was it was stored as a key in the evidence bag. He was going to use it as evidence as a key. So whoever killed them knew that this could turn into a knife. Yeah, so we're trying to figure out who knew the secret of this thing. Uh, also, uh, it seems like the videotape of the murder from today's trial is missing. So it seems like the killer might have taken that tape. I don't know why, but that seems pretty important. I saw Gumshoe goofing around there. And then we all ran into lobby number two. Hold it. Detective Gumshoe was there in the hallway. Yeah. Why didn't you attest to that earlier? When I saw Gumshoe, it was after I had heard the gunshot. Having seen him then didn't change the fact that he still could have done the deed. No! Oh. It sounds exactly like what, what Detective Bad told us before. However, is there something in particular we should be asking the detective about? There just might be. No one knew that the knife is actually the Yatagarisu's key. Reflecting on that, Perhaps there are other things that we know now that Detective Bad doesn't know yet. Yes, that should be my angle of attack. Let's save. Don't have much health. I'm going to try a wrong answer to see if he's got any new dialogue. Show off my badge! Objection. Detective Bad, that statement is in clear contradiction with this. Boy, I don't see a contradiction anywhere. Now, if you disrupt the investigation anymore, you get the picture. Y y yes, sir. It would appear that I was wrong. Yeah, I must think things through again. This time calmly and rationally. Right. Let's get that health back. I don't remember if that's new dialogue or not. You think Detective Bad would hate a trip to Switzerland? Ah, why is that? Um, this is a new one. I didn't hear any other strange sounds until that gunshot. Hold it. Detective Bad, you honestly don't remember hearing anything else? Yeah. Lots of Swiss cheese. Ah. <laughs> Very good. Is it possible you were so involved in your conversation that you may that you missed something? I've been a detective for a long time, and even if I were involved in something, I've got quite the habit of keeping tabs on everything that goes on around me. If there had been some other strange sound, you can be sure I would have heard it. Hmm, I suppose with this detective that's probably very likely. So, the gunshot. Oh yeah, and we also found out that the thing he's been chewing on this whole time is a lollipop. 
<laughs> Very good. Um, but do the balloon. What's the new evidence I haven't really looked at yet? Too misused perfume. Perfume given to bad by you. Same perfume as the one spilled in lobby number one. Yeah, this perfume smells really strong, apparently. Faraday wrote his strategy for winning in here. Okay. Anyway, yeah, so you didn't hear the balloon. Objection! Objection! The smug shrug. Detective Bad, does this balloon fragment remind you of anything? It's the same colour as the one Kay was holding. Oh? So you knew about the, that girl's balloon? Yeah. I was sitting with her up in the gallery. During the recess, just before we split up, I filled that balloon up for her. Well, as you may have already surmised, this piece did indeed come from Kay's balloon. So? What about the balloon? I wonder if you might remember hearing this balloon pop at some point? What are you getting at? Hmm. This fragment was found in the hallway, right in front of lobby number two. Furthermore, it was the sound of this balloon popping that the judge mistook as a gunshot. Oh? So the sound that the judge heard was not actually a gunshot, huh? On top of that, his honor said that he heard the balloon pop about 20 minutes before the trial was to reconvene. Yes, which means that his honor heard the balloon pop in the hallway when you were in lobby number one, Detective Bad. And if you were in lobby number one at that time, you were close enough that you should have heard the balloon popping as well. So? But don't give me a so. We just proved that there is a flaw in your testimony. The crackling of the truth is louder than the sound of your sweet naivety cracking. And since you kids don't seem to know, let me fill you in on something. Did you ever stop to think why the doors and walls of this place seem so rugged? That's because they were designed to keep secrets from being leaked. Is he claiming they're soundproof? And how do you hear the gunshot? But what is that supposed to mean? The doors and walls are super thick. The window panes are double layered. To top it all off, even the curtains are made of a special sound absorbing material. Then you mean... Since I was shut up inside lobby number one, there was no way I could have heard that sound. There was a window open in both rooms. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> That, that whole thing where Gumshoe didn't hear a struggle, that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean anything anymore then. Because anything could have happened in that room then. And he wouldn't have heard a thing. Th no! I knew that's what he was going to say. Then that means that Scruffface's testimony is completely useless. If the rooms are soundproof, then of course he wouldn't hear, hear any sign of a struggle. No! That's also why it's only natural that I didn't hear the balloon popping. Now, do you get it, kids? Miles, I thought we were supposed to be the ones finding flaws in his logic. Not the other way around. The other way around? It's not possible to hear the sound of a balloon popping if one were in lobby number one. However, if we examine this situation in reverse, a person standing in the hallway should not be able to hear the real gunshot either. And yet Detective Gumshoe claims to have heard it while he was standing in the hallway. Detective Bad, if that is the case, how exactly did you hear the gunshot? What do you mean, how? I just did. Hmm. It would appear that you have yet to realize a contradiction in your own words. Oh, now so. If the rooms are as soundproof as you say they are, then how did the sound of the gunshot enter your ears? I see what you mean. I guess I'm more out of it from Faraday's murder than I'd thought. Which means what exactly, Miles? In the end, what does it all boil down to? It boils down to this. There must be a reason. 
as to how Detective's bad and Gumshoe heard a gunshot they theoretically couldn't have. It looks like we need to examine the state of the crime scene again, huh? I already know the answer! The window was open! All the windows were open! <laughs> the state of the crime scene. Wait, can it be? I finally realised something before Edgeworth did. <laughs> I feel like Edgeworth's been ahead of me the whole time. It's that ultra-strong perfume you wears. She spilled some of it. Dissipating the smell, a window in lobby number one was opened to allow the perfume Miss Yu spilled to dissipate. Oh, and way too noisy! Huh. Lobby number two's television. It looks like it was set to an incredibly high volume. I don't remember when he said that. The surveillance video? How could a piece of evidence just disappear? Where did it go? Did someone throw it out the window? Um, lobby number two is television. It looks like it was set to an incredibly high volume. That's right, yeah, Gumshoe played with the TV and it was it was very loud static. Okay, I remember that now. Well, I'm guessing someone threw the evidence... But I'm st I still don't get how the person, es how the killer escaped the room. Because there's bars on the window. Hmm. Um. I'll put these two together first. The scent of flowers is in the air, so the smell came from lobby number one. It's simply not possible for the killer to have escaped through barred windows. And yet, the fragrance of the perfume managed to escape from Defendant Lobby Number One. Of course, incorporeal things can move freely through these open barred windows. The killer was a ghost! <laughs> a ghost! <laughs> no, I should have saved then. Yeah, well. The ghost! Spooky! Yeah. How does a loud television fit in? No, I want. There we go. Now then, what else besides a smell can go both in and out of an open barred window? Yeah, you have to do these in the right order, don't you? I feel like the important one you have to get to last because you're kind of building up to it. The answer is sound. So, no matter how careful the killer was, if the windows were open, the jig would be up. And since the windows in both Defendant Lobby Number 1 and the hallway were open, that explains how the sound of a gunshot could be heard in both locations. <laughs> Missing evidence and gunshot could be heard. I've got two pieces. I'm going to click them together. Click, click, click. The missing piece of evidence is a video that shows the moment in which Mr. Rell killed the Embassy staff member. The sound of the gunshot left quite an impression on me when it was played during the trial. The video should have been returned to Mr. Faraday's evidence bag for the recess. And brought back here. If it disappeared after that time, then it's possible that the tape is still here in this room. Eureka! The evidence that the missing evidence created for me is the gunshot sound that no one should have been able to hear in the first place. Are we wait, are we saying they played the tape from the TV and and that's the gunshot everyone heard? Then when did they get killed? Miles, what have you been thinking about? He just been standing there the whole time going just tapping his little finger. 
Stop wasting time thinking, and let's start looking again. It's not a waste of time to think, for I have figured out where we should look. And where would that be? I believe we should examine the television. The TV? Well, you kids have fun. Go ahead and examine whatever you like. Three days later. <laughs> Incorporeal. Good words there, Edgeworth. Yes. That's quite a... That, that's quite a word to use there. <laughs> the investigation. I won't rest until blah blah blah. The window is wide open. The scent of flowers is being blown in from the outside. I think it softens the heavy air in here somewhat. Hmm. Windows in both lobby number one and number two were opened. Maybe they were trying to air out the room, just like in num lobby number one. Or maybe they sought to ease some of the tension through some fresh air. With Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rowe in the same room, I imagine the latter to be the case. But was there really a need to open the window just for that? Hmm. Bum, 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 bum. This soundtrack is so good. It's so good. Earlier, when Detective Gumshoe touched this, it made a most terrible racket. You mean when Scruffy turned the television on, right? Actually, come to think of it, I don't think Detective Gumshoe actually touched the television at all. Furthermore, it seemed more like when a video feed suddenly stops. At least it did to me. I wonder why that is. Could it be that the tape's right here? It's a video player, and there seems to be a videotape inside. It looks like it, the tape must have stopped on its own when it reached the end. This tape? Could it not be the missing surveillance tape? I suppose, but... Detective Bad, would it be alright with you if I verified the contents of this video? Sure. Knock yourself out. Alright, then let's rewind this and see what we have. If I remember correctly, the footage of Rel killing the Embassy staff member should be at about the 30 minute mark from the start of the tape. Understood. This should be about right. Now then, let's see. Ah, uh, this is... this is the footage of Mr. Rell shooting the Embassy staff member. I knew it. The missing piece of evidence, the surveillance video, was here all along. Hmm, this case is really interesting. This sound. What's the meaning of this? You really want to side-scroll and beat him up with these sprites? Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> that would be fun. Be kind, rewind. Yeah, oh, VHS tapes. <sighs> Nostalgia. I mean, VHS tapes sucked, but lots of nostalgia there and like the sound of tapes rewinding and stuff and fast forwarding. It appears that Detective Bad has figured out the true source of the gunshot he heard. With this, I think we can figure out the trick behind this double murder. Do you mean that you've figured it all out then? Yes, all I have to do now is show what the gunshot detectives is show what the gunshot detectives Bad and Gumshoe heard was. I haven't figured it all out, Edgeworth. Would you mind telling me? <laughs> I mean, who actually killed them? <laughs> as long as it doesn't contain any blue badger footage, yeah. <laughs> and and when did they actually kill them? I'm so confused. And through where they heard it from. N fine. In that case, show me what you've deduced. <laughs> now, to show what the gunshot detectors Bad and Gumshoe heard was. And through where they heard it from. I won't rest until blah blah blah. Bum 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 bum. Uh, I guess I need to deduce. Hang on, he said uh, the gunshot first, so let's go for the gunshot first. Hang on. Back out of that. Gunshot was from the TV. Deduce. Surveillance video. 
video of the embassy staff member's murder. Gunshot is especially impactful. Eureka! Eureka! Oh, is this not right? This piece of evidence will clear away the last remaining contradiction in this case. Mars, I believe that piece may actually be proof of a different last of sorts. It proves that today will be your last day as a prosecutor. It appears that I've made a mistake. However, I know that the last riddle in his answer lies somewhere within this room. I need to calm down and think it through once more. Uh, okay, so what do I need to... Oh, did you s hear with the tape, I guess? Eureka! If the door and windows to the crime scene, namely this room that we're in, were closed, the killer could have used the gun and no one would have been the wiser. That's true. This courthouse does seem to be well designed for such a thing, as it were. However, what happened in reality was Detective Gumshoe, Detective Bad, and Miss Yu. All three of them heard the gunshot. Well, the windows in lobby number one, number two, and the hallway were open. So naturally, the people in those locations could hear it. Ah, but then, why would the criminal open the window in the first place? To allow the gunshot to be heard, I suppose. Correct. That's the only logical conclusion we can draw from this. Alright, hang on. Let me think. Thinking. So he assigned Gumshoe to the guard detail when Gumshoe arrived, and before then... So I think the murder must have happened before Gumshoe was even assigned as a guard, right? And then the murderer left the window open and the tape going so that uh, they would uh, hear the gunshot later. Yeah. Hmm. So bad claims he didn't know about the key. He could be he could be lying though. So yeah, it could be bad, it could be Miss Yu, or it could be um that other guy who showed up for like a second at the start. <laughs> it was probably him, right? I mean he showed up for a reason, right? <laughs> um, what was his name? Bum, 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 bum. Manny Cochin. And he showed up, so probably important. But why was that necessary in the first place? I want a real answer, Miles. I demand satisfaction. Very well. I believe that the killer wanted to manipulate our perception of a certain fact. What was it that the killer wanted to manipulate our perception of? Yeah. Good time to save my video game. Yeah, so all the window would have been closed back then, so the gunshot could have gone off back then. And then the killer left the window open. Hmm. Uh, a perception of when the crime took place. Yeah, that's that, that's the real answer, I think. Let's try the wrong ones. Crime scene. The killer wanted to manipulate our thoughts regarding the real crime scene. So you're suggesting that the killing really took place in a different location? Yes. In that case, would you care to explain to me how someone was able to carry two adult male bodies all the way here without anyone noticing? Furthermore, given that the scruff face was in the hallway the entire time, I believe you've just created your own contradiction, Miles. Y y yes well I suppose a mistake is a mistake. However, the whole reason why the killer left the window open was it not to mislead us on that particular fact. Murder weapon! The killer wanted to manipulate our thoughts regarding the murder weapon. Miles, we already know that the murder weapons are genuine. The forensic scientists have already proven that. It would appear that I've made a miscalculation. Um, and I won't bother dying because I think um, we'll get the same dialogue as before with T Detective Bad taking over. Well, when you die, you become a ghost, and incorporeal things can go through windows, so they could have transported two dead people. <laughs> Very good. The killer wanted to fabricate the time of death to their precise wishes, and they used the gunshot in the surveillance video to do so. It's 
So that's why the tape was left running. You mean, the gunshot I heard was from this video? Yes, which means that the murders really occurred at an earlier time than we thought. It must have been during the recess, but before Detective Gumshoe was on guard duty. Someone who has no alibi for that time period, and planned this crime out in advance. That person is the real killer. Okay, that's a short investigation. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth! Yes, what is it? Miss Yu is asking for you. She's in the courtroom. She says that she's identified the murderer, but that she wants to clarify something. It looks like Miss Yu is still investigating something. Understood. Please tell her that I will be right over. I'll come along. I want to hear what she has to say. It would appear that the time has come to uncover the truth. Time has come. Oh, okay. We finished part one. Yay! Time has come and so have I. I laughed last because you came to die. Yeah. The DMC4 song. How good was that sound system? Yeah! It was pretty good. Alright, what's the time? It's half an hour until cat feed time, and she's nowhere to be seen, so I don't think she's hungry yet. Um, I could use some water. I've still got some left, though. I'll keep going until the cat shows up and begs for food, and then we'll take a little break then. Oh, yeah, September 10, 6.15pm. District Court, courtroom number three. Okay, so Bad said he was... He was uh, in the gallery with K during the recess, right? So that would give him an alibi. Um, where did Miss Yu... Uh, we don't know where Yu was. I mean, we don't know where Manny Cochin was. Always plan your streams around Cat. Yep. <laughs> you must plan everything around Cat. <laughs> K, what are you doing here? Oh, hello, mister. I'm still investigating. But the object you're looking for has already... Okay. Don't mind him. Please continue with your investigation. Okay. You got it. Ah, he wants to hide the fact that we've found the tape. Detective Bad, haven't we already found what you were looking for? If it means I can keep her in the dark just a little longer, any little task will do. Oh? You're more sympathetic than I thought. Hmm. Yeah, Bad's a pretty cool character. I like him. I hope he doesn't turn out to be the killer. <laughs> I've been waiting for you, Edgeworth. I've also been waiting for the moment in which we can finally lay this case to rest. <laughs> the moment in which we can finally lay this case to rest? Wasn't that when we placed Detective Gumshoe under arrest? <laughs> Yeah, like, she's really pushing to have Gumshoe convicted, so that sounds like she's trying to cover for herself. But it's really suspicious that this Manny Cochin guy showed up for like a second at the start. I think we've more than solved this case already, <laughs> don't you? We'll see. It all depends on whether or not your logic holds. Oh, I see we even have a viewer in the gallery. And why even Mr. Baird is here? A viewer in the gallery? I'm hardly just a bystander. I have a duty to see this case through to the end. No matter how it turns out. Oh? Is that right? Anyway, I thought you might like to hear what I've slaved away to find out. I've taken statements on every single person's movements. During the time when our suspect was in the hallway. I also confirmed that there is no possible route of escape from lobby number two. Yeah, thanks. We don't need to know any of that. <laughs> None of that matters. <laughs> Therefore, the killer must without a doubt be Detective Gumshoe. And that's all you have? Yeah, that's all there is to my conclusion. End this case. Sorry, but I beg to differ. In a trial, there is always time for a rebuttal. And we are standing in a court of law. 
It'd be more than appropriate to follow the rules of court in this case, don't you think? <laughs> I'm absolutely like a rookie to think such a thing. Alright, I'll play along and give you a proper testimony. If my logic is correct, then I have already won. All I have to do now is prove it by showing who the real killer is. Bum, bum, bum. Misuse argument. Gumshoe is an incompetent boo, but he's no murderer. He's an excellent bridge builder, though. Yeah, yeah, he is actually. Yeah, he built that bridge in uh, Trials and Tribulations, didn't he? The bridge to the turnabout. <laughs> Oh yeah, we need the judge. Someone call in the judge. He probably wants to be here for this. Everyone, sounds a suspect has an alibi for when the gun went off. Furthermore, the areas around the crime scene have all been thoroughly investigated, right? I also confirmed that there is no possible escape route from lobby number two. Which leaves us with one unshakable conclusion. That Detective Gumshoe is the killer. Yeah, her earrings are scales of justice. Which is pretty cool. <laughs> Now that you have your testimony, I expect a good rebuttal, Edgeworth. <laughs> but of course. There is no need to confront her logic head on right now. I should instead focus on drawing out any trump card she has up her sleeve. Everyone sounds a suspect has an alibi for when the gun went off. Gumshoe is a man of action and not a type of person who does his job. <laughs> Actually, I'm impressed that gum that it wasn't that Gumshoe fell asleep or whatever on the bench. You know, he was he was actually there and awake the whole time, so he didn't really screw up. So I'm, I'm glad they didn't go with that angle. Everyone sounds a suspect has an alibi for when the gun went off. The suspect. But I thought that Detective Gumshoe's alibi has already been proven. <laughs> Are you joking, Edgeworth? I assure you, this is no joke. Look, I know you heard from the judge earlier that the detective was in the hallway with Mr. Faraday's daughter eating a Swiss roll. Yes, that is correct. But see, that was 20 minutes before the real gun shot went off, right? And the problem is, there's no one else who can corroborate what he did since the snacking. Hmm. I see she's done her research well, which means that I should focus on drawing out whatever trump cards she's withholding. Furthermore, the areas around the crime scene have all been thoroughly investigated, right? Whether they have been thoroughly investigated or not is for me to decide. <laughs> the scrunched eyebrows and lines up on your forehead are back. Anyway, even if you believe it hasn't been exhaustive, the crime scene, lobby number two, has no way out other than the hallway Detective Gumshoe was standing in. And because he claimed to be there, that makes him the only possible suspect. But isn't it also possible that someone escaped through a window and into the garden? <laughs> That's the first place everyone looked, silly. The police aren't a bunch of lazy bums. They looked into every possibility, you know. Isn't that right, Mr. Bad? Yeah. There wasn't a scrap of evidence to suggest someone used one of the windows. There also weren't any footprints or anything in the courtyard garden. I suppose they really did check everything that could be relevant to the case. I also confirmed that there was no possible escape route from lobby number two. Are you absolutely positive that there are no possible routes of escape? Of course I'm sure. And why are you so certain? This is a courthouse, the place where criminals are brought to be judged. If there were, were an escape route, I'm sure every criminal will be using it to escape. It's just common sense. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth, I suggest you use a bit more of it in the future. Grrk. Wouldn't they have, like, camera surveillance of all the defendant lobbies. Another thing they should do, considering they're suspects. Gumshoe usually does help you uncover key evidence. Yeah, that's true. Bum, 
There is no need to confront her logic head on right now. I should instead focus on drawing out any trump cards she has up her sleeve. Okay, that's just what he said before. Which leaves us with one unshakable conclusion that Detective Gumshoe is the killer. You may think it's unshakable, but to me, there are still too many unanswered questions. For example, who was it that placed the gun in Mr. Faraday's hand? <laughs> but you're the only one still wondering, Matt. Detective Gumshoe probably had no idea which hand Mr. Faraday used to write with. Even if you know someone, it doesn't mean you'll know which hand they write with, right? I mean, I certainly don't care about that sort of thing. <laughs> hmm. I'm not about to let her get a rise out of me with such a flippant statement. Hmm. I suppose we've really reached the end now. I already have my trump card ready. All that remains is to play it. But before I do, I think I should inquire into a little something about her argument. You said earlier that you confirmed the alibis of every person other than the suspect. However, I don't recall either Francisca or myself speaking with you about the subject. Ah, uh, but there were witnesses. For you, there is your mentor who gave you an alibi. I see. As for the little missy, phew, she came to the courthouse during the recess, phew, then was stopped by a security guard at the door to the hallway. She gave him quite a whipping for that, or so I heard. I'm the daughter of Manfred von Karma, and I will not be forcibly stopped by a guard, or a bailiff, or anyone else. Wait, so basically, the only reason Francisca bothered to show up today was because she found out that I was to be the replacement prosecutor? By the way, Miss Yu, what about everyone's alibis before Detective Gumshoe was assigned to guard duty? What about them? Have you looked into what people were doing during that span of time? <laughs> What kind of idiot do you take me for? It doesn't matter when the killer went into lobby number two. From the time we heard the gunshot, to the time Mr. Bad and I arrived on the scene as we dashed from lobby number one, the only person who could have committed the crime was Detective Gumshoe. Yes, let's talk about when you and Detective Bad heard that gunshot, shall we? I suppose that if we go by your logic, then Detective Gumshoe is the only one. However, what if the crime had occurred at an entirely different time than when that gunshot you heard went off. What then? That gunshot was a trap, meant to manipulate our pers- huh? Sadie, your explanation is very lacking, Edgeworth. The gunshot we heard in lobby number one, care to explain how that could have been fabricated? Mum. It was fabricated through this, of course. <laughs> It's a joke, I get it. Your deadpan delivery is great. Of course, if you're actually serious, well, that's less of a laughing matter. Oh, all right, so I was mistaken. The gunshot they heard in lobby number one. What was it that they mixed it up with? All I have to do is present that piece of evidence. Oh, you can't have cameras in lobbies like these? Ah, okay. I figured maybe they could just not record sound, but uh, I suppose people can lip read, so that makes sense. Surveillance video! That tape? Yes, it's exactly what you think it is. This is the surveillance tape of Mr. Rell, the prosecution presented in today's trial. This was found loaded in the video player in lobby number two. That was connected to the large television that had its volume turned all the way up. You can't honestly mean that the sound we heard was the gunshot in the video. Ah, but I do. Which leads me to my next point. The murders, con uh, the murders occurred much earlier than when anyone heard the gunshot. That's the only thing I can think of, too. After committing double homicide, the killer took the surveillance video out from Mr. Faraday's evidence bag, turned the television's volume all the way up, and left the video to play. If played from the beginning, it would take 30 minutes for the gunshot sound to come on. And since we now know that this method of time manipulation is possible, it opens up the possibility that the killer is someone other than Detective Gumshoe. Objection. Objection. Sounds from a television doesn't amount to much here. 
But of course, Mr. Prosecutor Edgeworth and little Miss Von Karner already knew that much from the very beginning, right? Uh, of course we knew, didn't we, Miles? Yes, of course. We know about the soundproof quality of this courthouse's rooms. Of course, I'm not about to admit we had no idea until a little while ago. <laughs> That's right, and if the rooms are soundproof, then we should not have been able to hear it. And yet we heard the gunshot clear as day. And? The end? Th that's it. End of story. Hmm. <clears throat> but it's not. How should I explain why she was able to hear a gunshot from a soundproof room? By saving my video game. Yeah, the objection sounds really strange, doesn't it? You expect that from pain? Yeah! It sounds like a pain objection, doesn't it? <sighs> objection! Hmm. The window was open, but maybe the door was open. Hmm. The door to lobby number one was open. <laughs> you, you really love to make me laugh, don't you? Sorry, but the door to lobby number one where Mr. Bad and I was closed tight. Were was closed tight. Isn't that right, Mr. Bad? Yeah. What? I was mistaken. Miles Edgeworth, you have sullied the name of Von Karma. That logic just now was unforgivably bad. When I mean, it was pretty bad. Urgh. I need to carefully think this through once more. There is a reason as to why they were able to hear it so clearly. Now then, let's give the other incorrect answer. <laughs> there was a hole in the wall. Miles, I don't think that such a hole exists. Because if it did, I think the two of them would have noticed a crime going on next door. <laughs> That's exactly right. Besides, if there's a hole to be found, it's probably in your logic. Hmm. I was just thinking that exact same thing. <laughs> Whose side are you on, Francisca? I need to carefully think this through. And soft reset my video game. A painful objection indeed. <laughs> Very good. Very good. There is, actually, one common point between lobby number one and lobby number two. And it is that despite the fact that both rooms have air conditioners installed, a window was open in each. Now, we know that the window in lobby number two was opened by the killer. However, a window in lobby number one was also opened. Okay, was her spilling the perfume a coincidence? Or did she do that on purpose? to create witnesses, fake witnesses, and an alibi. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Objection. Objection. <laughs> it's probably just coincidence that they were both open at the time. Objection. <laughs> it was no mere coincidence, I assure you. Oh, thanks, Edgeworth, for <laughs> answering my questions. <laughs> Why was the window open in lobby number one? The answer is that a certain person did something to cause the window to be opened. And the person who triggered that action. That person is the real guilty party. The real killer in this double murder is... Manfred von Karma. We finally got him. This person is the real culprit behind this case. What sort of nonsense? Be serious here, Miles Edgeworth. Oh, that must not be the correct person. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if you could somehow frame Manfred von Karma for it and then just break the timeline? <laughs> Bim, bim, bim. Miss Callisto Yu, I hereby formally indict you of the murder of Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rail. What? You, you indict me? Ah, <laughs> she did a line with the lipstick, that's pretty good. Are you serious, Miles? Why do you think she is the killer? I don't understand her motive just yet. But of course I'm serious. Because she is the only one who could have done it. Well, Miss Yu, do you still feel like laughing now? <laughs> of course I do, Edgeworth. My argument must not be tight enough yet. 
Although, I never thought things would spiral into this. But I'll have you know I'm enjoying this dance quite a bit. I guess this means it's time for my own rebuttal now, right? Misuse rebuttal. You argue that the window was opened. However, do you have proof it was I who did that? Furthermore, do you have proof that the tape was used in committing the crime? Frankly, I'm shocked at you for going around accusing people of murder like this. Especially with logic as full of holes as yours. A time paradox. <laughs> this is where it really starts. I mustn't let my guard down for even a second or the truth will blow away. Now is the time to put the patented Von Karma perfect proof to the test. Oh, we could have, we could have accused the judge too. The judge is almost never in um, in your actual organiser as a profile. So we could have, done, could have done that too. Misuse rebuttal. You argue that the window was opened. However, do you have proof it was I who did that? Evidence? All I'd need to do is have some prints analysed and would know straight away. Hm. Be my guest. She sounds as though she has the room to manoeuvre, which means even if we were able to lift prints, they'd only show that it was someone else. But maybe that someone else was forced to open the window. Hm. That's simple logic. Why don't I try presenting that piece of evidence? I have nothing to lose. Edwards is backseat gaming. <laughs> What's wrong? The scrunched eyebrows, lines on your forehead, they're all back. More importantly, are you going to be okay not running a fingerprint analysis? Yes, I'll be fine. Oh, well in that case, I'll just continue with my testimony, alright? Furthermore, do you have proof that the tape was used in committing the crime? I thought I'd just proved that it was. Sure you proved that the tape was there at the scene of the crime. However, that doesn't prove that it was actually used in said crime. Unfortunately for you, Miss Yu, the fact that the tape was there at the crime scene in itself is in itself very important. How so? Hm. By the very existence of that tape at the crime scene, it proves the possibility that the when of the crime could have been fabricated, and that possibility alone renders all alibis and witness reports irrelevant. Basically, it means that we will need to re-examine every person's movements again. Whether the tape was used in the crime or not, that we can re-evaluate afterwards. So in conclusion, you're admitting that you can't prove that it was at this point? Frankly, I'm shocked at you for going around accusing people of murder like this. Even if you're shocked, that is of no concern to me. I do things my own way. Oh? I see that you're not laughing for a change. Because I'm shocked. Again, you being shocked is of no concern to me. Let us continue with the testimony. Aha! Alright, but let me say just one thing. You shouldn't go around accusing people. Especially with logic as full of holes as yours. Full of holes. Well, I suppose it might be. Oh? Admitting to your faults now, are we? At this point in time, is what I meant to say. Should I take that to mean that you're just a sore loser? <laughs> no matter how full of holes my logic may be right now, if I plug them one at a time, I will ultimately make my way to the truth. What a paradox. Take care to not fall into one of those holes before you fill it up. <laughs> Miles, you remember, don't you? About why a window in lobby number one was opened? Yes, of course I do. And that's how I'll attack. I'll present the reason why the window had to be opened. Bum, bum, bum. Alright, present the perfume. Objection! Accusing people is kind of his job, though. Yeah, it, it is. <laughs> He's a prosecutor. I'm sure you've seen this before, haven't you, Miss Yu? Ha! <laughs> Edgeworth! I never knew you were into wearing that kind of perfume. It's not exactly what I'd recommend for boys, you know. What? Th this isn't mine! That's right, it's mine. And I received it from Detective Bad, you see. Miss Yu, you can pretend all you like, but we know at least this much for sure. 
that this bottle of perfume was given to Detective Bad by you. <laughs> because it gets really strong really fast. So, what about the perfume? While you were in lobby number one, you made a big show of spilling some of this perfume. That's according to Detective Bad. <laughs> oh, I know. You also knew that if you spilled it, he would naturally move to open a window. Objection. Come now, I've already told you that it's all just a big coincidence. After we opened the window on lobby number one, I just left it open, you know? So maybe it was just dumb luck that we heard the gunshot through the window. Objection. The timing of when you were going to spill the perfume is something you could control. And the most important fact about this case is when people were made to hear the shot. Furthermore, it would have been pointless if you didn't have an alibi for yourself at the time. You mean... Miss Yu, you were the one who called Detective Bad into lobby number one. Mm. When you saw him bring Detective Gumshoe into the hallway. Is that correct? All of today's premeditated events could only have been thought up by you, Miss Yu. Grr. <laughs> you accused me of murder on the fact that I spilled a little perfume. Well, allow me to say this much. I couldn't have killed Mr. Faraday. Would you care to testify as to why? <laughs> Look, I've had a lot of fun today, really. But I grew weary of this game of cat and mouse. Let's make this the last testimony and wrap up this absurd case once and for all. I don't think that's your decision to make. <laughs> You don't get to decide that, lady. <laughs> Why, it couldn't be me. Accusing someone of murder over a spilled bottle of perfume is a bit over the top. But I suppose forgery of evidence is to be expected of a disciple of Von Karma. In any case, it simply could not have been me who killed Mr. Faraday. After all, I don't even know where the knife that was used to kill him came from. Mm. You don't, hey? Miles, her testimony is flawless. Yes, but no matter what sort of trick she may try to pull, she won't escape me. And if I'm lacking in information, I'll just draw it out of her. Mm-hmm. Accusing someone of murder over a spilled bottle of perfume is a bit over the top. I think I already explained the significance of that earlier. You only confirmed that I did spill some perfume. But that's all. That you would accuse me of murder based on a simple spill. Don't you dare complain when I sue you for defamation of character. <laughs> Do as you like, but as for me, I believe. You believe? I believe that you are the true culprit in this case. <laughs> My, you're enthusiastic. Of course, I should have guessed. I suppose forgery of evidence is to be expected of a disciple of Von Karma. I formally request that you desist in your attack against my mentor. Yes, or we'll sue you for defamation. <laughs> All I'm doing is telling the truth. Well, maybe more like spreading gossip. Although, your adamant denials are, shall we say, just adding fuel to the fire. How dare you! Say such a thing! Calm down, little girl. Don't let her get to you. Ah, oh, why did you have to ruin my fun? <laughs> well, shall I continue? In any case, it simply could not have been me he killed Mr. Faraday. And why exactly could you not have killed him? <laughs> I was just about to testify to that. You're such an impatient man. <laughs> I'm not really into that, you know, Edgeworth? Oh, your preferences have no bearing on what is at hand. <laughs> Feeling a little uncomfortable, are we? Yeah. Miss Yu, you will desist in this tomfoolery and return to your testimony. And Miles, if you're going to lose your cool, then I won't show you any mercy. 
Sorry. Miss Yu, please continue with your testimony. Sure. <laughs> As I was saying, I couldn't have possibly killed Mr. Faraday. Now let's see what the, uh, the end dialogue here is. Miles, her testimony is flawless. Right, it's the same dialogue as before. After all, I don't even know where the knife that was used to kill him came from. At this rate, she will inevitably escape. But if she really was the one who killed Mr. Faraday, then she must have known about the existence of the knife. I'm sorry, Miss Yu. Maybe you weren't aware. However, the knife that was used to kill Mr. Faraday was taken from his evidence bag. Miles! What do you think you're doing? <laughs> I'm drawing the truth out of her. That's what I'm doing. Huh? But I don't recall a knife being presented at the trial earlier. Well, I suppose that's because the evidence was something Mr. Faraday had yet to use. <laughs> ah, so that's what you're trying to do. Look, why don't you cut it out with the lies? I've already figured you out. There was no knife inside Mr. Faraday's evidence bag. The only evidence he had yet to present was the key the Yatagadasu had sent. And unless a key can magically turn into a knife, you really don't have a leg to stand on. How'd you know about the key? No worries, Tag. Hope you're having fun. <laughs> Did you really think you could trap me? Come now, be honest. Heh, <laughs> I never intended to do such a thing. It was all a misunderstanding on my part. In any case, I wonder if you might append what you just said to your testimony. Sure. Why not? I'll even say it as many times as you like. There was a key in his evidence bag, but you can't kill anyone with a simple key. Yeah, how, how did she know that he was going to present a key? Because that was going to be his little trump card in showing that um, what's his name isn't the real thief mm. Miss Yu, I would just like to confirm something with you one more time Oh? About what's going to happen to Detective Gumshoe after this? I don't need to ask you about that, because he isn't the killer <laughs> Looks like the number of wrinkles on your forehead have increased yet again <laughs> that issue aside, Miss Yu, I'd like to ask you about what was inside the bag. You are sure it was the Yatagarasu's key, correct? <laughs> yes, I'm sure. Which is why I'm completely baffled as to where that knife could have come from. I think I've just spotted the road to a perfect victory. Finally, it would appear that you have revealed your true identity, Miss Yu. Miles, her final statement. Yes, I know. All I have to do now is to present the evidence. But what is this ominous feeling that I can't shake? Hmm. Why is this music so good? Save. Got a feeling there's more to it than this. Bum, bum. Hello, cat. You woke up, hey? She's awake. Bum, 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 bum. Actually, if I try presenting something wrong here, what dialogue has she got? Objection. Your statement is nothing before this perfect piece of evidence. I don't think I'd call that perfect. Hmm. <laughs> If you don't try to verify it, how will you know? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> oh, I just love the way you say that with such confidence. But just as you said, you can only say something is perfect after you've verified it. Now try presenting evidence to me again. But this time, in the correct way, rookie. Grr. I was a fool to claim that it was perfect. <laughs> the ominous badge feeling. <laughs> 
present proto badger. <laughs> Let's try again and see if there's any other dialogue. This piece of evidence stands in contradiction to your statement just now. There's no contradiction here. Too bad, huh, Edgeworth? <laughs> she took the wind out of my sails with a single sentence. But I must keep my composure. I can't allow her to gain the upper hand. Here, let, let's reload for health, just in case there's more after this. Just in case. Load. What's with the sailor talk? Yeah, I don't know. Kind of weird. Alright, present the uh, knife key thing. Who made this thing anyway? Miss you, I wonder if you might take a look at this photo for me. This is a picture of the key the Yatagarisu sent to the police. However, while it may look like a key at first glance, it in fact has the secret ability to transform into a knife, which means that what was inside Mr. Faraday's bag was both the Yatagarisu's key and the murderous knife. A murderous knife. <laughs> You knew that the key was inside Mr. Faraday's bag, did you not? Yes. Well, with the Yatagarisu's key alone, it's more than possible to kill Mr. Faraday. <coughs> Do you understand now? Just knowing of the existence of the Yatagarisu's key. Objection. I still haven't had a good look at it. Showing it to me from that far away, you could be lying for all I know. You would even now still feign ignorance? <laughs> I'm not feigning anything. But we can't have you accusing me of a crime with false evidence, now can we? I mean, Mr. Von Karma. I've heard some very interesting rumours about him. Um, are you mocking my papa? Don't you dare sully the good name of my mentor. Now take a good look. This piece of evidence is more than real. Wow, who knew there was such a trick to this thing? Why do we have to prove the evidence to her? I mean, Detective Bad knows about it. Why, why do we have to prove to her? She has no actual authority here. <laughs> Are you satisfied now? But of course, you knew from the very beginning, didn't you? You knew that the knife and the Yatagarisu's key are one and the same. Otherwise, someone like you, who isn't a member of law enforcement, and who would never have been privy to this trick, would have never known about it to begin with. Furthermore, there's something that the Yatagarisu sent to the police. How did you have knowledge as to what it was? <laughs> Actually, I heard it from Mr. Faraday. Just before he dragged Mr. Reloff, he told me. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot. He also told me about the key turning into a knife at that time. Sure he did. He also farted rainbows and turned into a unicorn. <laughs> but he didn't tell me about how the key actually transforms. <laughs> what you are saying is simply not possible. Oh? And why not? Because Mr. Faraday himself didn't know about the hidden knife within the key. For within these pages, he mentions nothing about a knife. Objection. I'm not sure he would have written everything in his organizer, you know? Unless you're a sailor-themed lawyer, which is possible in this universe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wouldn't something of this importance be better left to oral communication? Objection. Unfortunately, that is also not... That is also impossible, because Detective Bad didn't know about the knife aspect either. What would have been highly classified information, even within the police force? And is something that even the lead detective on the case didn't know. Why would Mr. Faraday have felt the need to share such information with the opposition? <laughs> yeah, I guess he wouldn't have much of a reason to. <laughs> Looks like I gave a pretty lame excuse, huh? <laughs> How can you laugh at a time like this? She probably just realised the flaw in her logic, and is actually in a panic over it. 
But that's not something we need to concern ourselves with. Hmm. I suppose you're right. Miss Yu, I'd like to state that I also know how you know the real nature of the knife. I know how you know that I know that you know. <laughs> Do you now? Well, why don't you put your money where your mouth is and show me? Oh, I will, and I'll wipe that smile off your face by the time we're through. And I'll also save my game. Because I think I have to now do things, and choose things, and think about things. This is it, the moment of truth. The secret behind the Yatagarasu's key. Only one person would have knowledge of would ha would have had knowledge of it from the get go. Who would know from the start that the Yatagarasu's key could change into a knife? The judge. That would be this person. <laughs> Thanks for the best laugh I've had all day. Now, are we ready to call it a day yet? Wait a second. I was mistaken. <laughs> Shouldn't there be a bad ending here? Ah, uh, maybe. Let's find out. Yeah, actually, you're right. There probably is a new bad ending here. Since I just saved, let's let's go for it. Where'd that cat go? I thought she was begging for food, but no, she's not here. Yeah. Take, that. Take that! Objection. Her objection noise is really funny, actually. <laughs> it just sounds so weird. Actually, there was probably a different game over at the judge, wasn't there? Or maybe maybe Detective Bad would show up and take us off the case. Maybe. Alright. <laughs> Looks like you're at the end of your rope. We already have a suspect, so you can spare me the rest of your long-winded speech. Mr. Bad, I'll leave the rest in your capable hands. I'm not done with you yet. <laughs> Maybe not, but I'm done with you. See you around, Edgeworth. I can't let her get away. Not now. Oh. Then she got away. And the truth was lost for all eternity. Oh, cat's back. Hello, sweetie. Do, 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 do. So could she be the real Yatagarasu? I don't know, this this doesn't feel right. Hmm. Take that. Take that. There is only one person who would have known about the dual nature of the key. <laughs> and that is? And that is, the person who sent the Yatagarasu's key to the police. That is to say, the Yatagarasu herself. Are you saying that this lawyer is the great thief Yatagarasu? Miss Yu, you used Mr. Rell to lure Mr. Faraday into a trap, didn't you? You, who profess to bear a grudge against criminals. Why? Why do something like this? <laughs> uh -huh. Is this going to be her breakdown? She's going to laugh until she passes out? Who would have thought that you, a stupid rookie prosecutor, would see through me? You're sending the biggest chill down my spine right now, Edgeworth. This feeling of thrill 
It's even greater than when I sneak into some place. You. You. <laughs> you, you. You killed Faraday. Why? Answer me, Callisto, you. <laughs> Callisto, you, huh? That's not my real name. Because my real identity is, yes, the great thief Yatagarasu. Let me tell you something, Edgeworth. Mr. Faraday was one difficult man to deal with. For you see, he had discovered my true identity, which is why I had to erase him from the world of law. I made Rel an offer, an acquittal for a little favour in return. All he had to do was accuse Mr. Faraday of being yet again a sue in court. This is quite a turn. I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> but once we entered the recess, Rel was dragged off by Mr. Faraday, which threw my plan into a complete mess. I chased after them and eavesdropped on them through a crack in the door. That Rel caves to only two things, money and authority, just as all thugs do. I feared my plan was going to be ruined if Mr. Faraday held on to Rel any longer. Wait, the door wasn't completely shut? Weird. Plus, if I had let them continue on the way they were, I would have been found out. That's why I had no choice. I had to kill them both. But didn't you say that you despised criminals? <laughs> but do I really? You. Have you forgotten about the KG-8 incident too? Maybe. What sort of woman would... So then, it... was it your plan to kill Mr. Faraday with the very evidence that you sent? Haha, <laughs> well, I had a good idea of what Mr. Faraday was going to do. I anticipated that Mr. Faraday was going to prove that Rel wasn't the Yatagarasu by using this Yatagarasu's key as evidence, and that he would bring it with him. Which is why I thought to use the knife portion. With a weapon as well disguised as this, no one would be the wiser. Because who in their right mind would think something like this could be a weapon? I casually entered lobby number two on the pretext that I had to talk with Mr. Faraday. And in order to get to get in with him, I pretended to be worried about something. He then let me hold the Yatagarasu's key, just like that. He never noticed that I had changed the key into a knife inside that plastic bag. And he didn't have the chance to take note of the knife that took his life. How could you kill him? I knew him for a long time, you know. At the very least, I thought to give him a quick and painless death. But if you killed Mr. Faraday first, there was no need for you to kill Mr. Rell as well. I believe I mentioned why when we were placing Detective Gumshoe under arrest. Something about having accidentally created an eyewitness, and how that led the killer to think about setting them up as though they'd killed each other. Then the trick with the surveillance tape. Yes, I hadn't actually planned to use a gun. The risk was too high that I'd be caught. However, that's when I remembered the existence of that surveillance tape. Which is why I had Real help me set up the crime scene. And after all was said and done, I rewarded him for all his hard work with a bullet. You. You're a defense attorney, aren't you? How could you? How could you betray your own client? <laughs> client? If you want to talk about who was a client of whose first, it was me. Hmm? I was a client in, in the murder of the Kadopian Embassy staff member, Died Man. You. You. Ordered a hit job? <laughs> you still haven't figured it out, Mr. Bad. What the hell is going on? <laughs> I had Dead Man killed because he was about to give away the info about the smuggling ring. Now, who exactly do you think would benefit from such an assassination? It can't be. You. You're. That's right. I'm a member of the smuggling ring. What? How, how could this... 
You don't mean... You're working with many coaching too, do you? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Guess you'll never know. The Yatagarasu claims to be noble, but you're just another cold-blooded murderer. <laughs> That's right, little girl. The Yatagarasu is just another killer. Be quiet, you. Yatagarasu, you can run from the law, but you'll never escape it. So just humbly accept the judgment of this court. <laughs> hey, Edgeworth. Did you know? The Yatagarasu has three legs. Do you know what that is? Hmm? <laughs> no? Well, let me tell you. It means that the Yatagarasu has more than one razor-sharp way to do her work. Um... You really are too naive, Edgeworth. You even handed the Yatagarasu's key right to me without a second thought. Everything may not have gone according to plan, but I'll still gladly take it. You mean... the key was your real target? Uh, and even after I gave you such great advice... Didn't I tell you to always keep a good eye on a criminal? Or you may regret what comes of your negligence. You two, get down! Eek! Ah! My body. I can't move. Hey mister, to your right! You! Are you all right, Francisca? Uh, I'm perfectly fine, Miles. Her voice is shaking, but it looks like she's unharmed. Hmm? Where did Kay go? Oh god. That's a gunshot! Oh dear. 7pm, courtroom number three. Sorry, but it looks like she got away. I called the precinct. They should have a perimeter set up soon. Detective Bad, are you alright? I heard a gunshot. I'm okay. Just got another hole in my jacket. He may say he's fine, but he looks quite shaken. But more importantly, boy, I mean, Mr. Edgeworth, Miss Von Karma. Are you too hurt? I... I'm absolutely fine. I'm also alright. Thanks to Kay. Speaking of Kay, where is she? Hmm, I don't know. She just sort of disappeared. Hmm, I'll go look for her. Oh, it was a balloon popping. Okay. Probably. <laughs> oh, and hey, Detective Gumshoe. Y yes, sir. Detective Bad, sir. I'm sorry, I doubted you. Don't worry, sir. It's not your fault. I... Well, I lied to you guys too, after all. I heard about what happened. From Kay. Lying while giving testimony is still unforgivable. But in this case, you were protecting Kay and her feelings. Looks like you just might have what it takes to be a real detective. Now, don't you ever lose that detective spirit, okay? You, you got it, Pops! Pops? Watched one too many detective dramas recently, have we? Way to single-handedly destroy the cheery atmosphere with one snarky comment. I should get back to the investigation. I swear, I'll catch you if it's the last thing I do. 
Be careful, Detective Bad, and take care. Thanks. Well, I'm off. Maybe we'll run into each other again someday. <laughs> um, so, uh, thanks a bunch, pal. You're the best. You really did find out the truth behind everything. Yes, well, I'm glad we solved everything before you were taken to prison. You're joking, but with this game you never know. Yeah, you really never know. <laughs> you really never know. <laughs> Aw. I can't believe how much trouble I caused you with my testimony, Detective Gumshoe. Ah, it was no problem, really. <laughs> I mean, I lied too, so I didn't help anything. It's really not your fault, Your Honor. Well, even if we didn't have his honest testimony, I think that lawyer would have found another way to get you convicted on her behalf. Yeah. I can't believe I was about to get fired during my first week as a detective. Hmm. Well, so long as you're not fired. You should work hard, give all that you have, and perform your duties well. Oh, and one more thing. Kay left a present for you with me. She did? Oh, what is it? What was it that Kay left for me? The proof of their friendship. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I should have saved. Oh, I don't want to give an incorrect answer because, yeah, it's been a while since I saved. Oh, right. I'll, I'll give him the Swiss roll. Butts. Larry Butts. Take that. Take that. Take that Swiss roll. It's it's a court our special Swiss roll. C can I really have it? Yes, it's a present meant for you, after all. Thanks a bunch. You have no idea how happy this makes me, pal. I'm gonna eat this right now. Sure, go ahead. The Swiss rolls Detective Gumshoe and Kay bought together. Well, the one Kay saved never reached her father. It would appear that her sentiments have touched the heart of this detective. He's so happy, it's as though he's having a welcome back celebration of his own. Well, I was asked by Kay to give it to him. Whoa, that was good, pal. I can't believe I got to eat two of these delicious things in one day. It's like I'm in Swiss roll paradise or something. I've got to thank Kay myself. Hey, wait, where is she? He only noticed just now. Was his mind not present when we discussed her earlier? Detective Bad left to go search for her earlier. Maybe you should go join him. Yeah, you betcha, pal. I'm gonna go help him. Oh, but first... You know what, pal? Actually, I guess I shouldn't be so rude to you anymore, huh? I'm gonna stick right by your side from now on, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. Aww. That's why he's so loyal. Aww. That's awesome. I sense nothing but a most troublesome relationship from that ominous statement. We should go home too, Miles. We have to hurry and report what has happened to Papa. Agreed. Well, I'm afraid we must be going now, Detective. Roger, sir. And don't you worry. I'll investigate the next case we're on real well. I'll, um, be counting on you. The scent of trouble is definitely in the air. Thus, like a bad dream, my first outing at court came to a disturbing end. A few months later, I was finally able to properly stand in court as a prosecutor. But the detective in charge of the investigation was, as I dreaded, Detective Gumshoe. After that, he became my direct subordinate. I have tried, but words fail to describe the immeasurable suffering he has caused me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> But I suppose that's just how things are. <laughs> Holy crap. As for the little girl who suddenly disappeared, she's now... Ah. So, do you remember now? Yes. I remember everything. Okay, it's been a while. Okay, you sure grew up a lot. Of course, but thank goodness. I thought you two had totally forgotten about me. You know, I was really worried about you after all that. 
Where have you been all this time? <laughs> Gummy, I didn't know you cared. After my father died, I went to li go live with my mother's relatives. They lived really far away, so I wasn't really able to come back here all that much. Oh, is that what happened? Well, I'm just glad you're alright. <laughs> so, does it all make sense now? You betcha it does. Oh, you know what? I was going through my father's bookshelves recently, and... Actually, there are still a number of things that don't make sense, Kay. Huh? First of all, why did you come all this way to see me? And second, why are you calling yourself the Yatagarasu? The Yatagarasu is Callisto Yu, the woman who killed your father. No, you're wrong. The real Yatagarasu was my father. Hm. Hmm? M Mr. Faraday was the Yatagarasu? Like I said, I was going through my father's bookshelf recently. And I found a secret diary hidden among his books. I have no regrets in choosing to walk the path of the Yatagarasu. That was written in his diary, and that's how I know for sure. But that's... that's impossible! What's with that look? You don't believe me? It wasn't just the expression on my face. I clearly said it was impossible just now. Alright then, how do you explain this? It's a way of disarming any security system of the user's choosing. Yep, that's Little Thief. Truth be told, this is the Yatagarasu's greatest secret. And this little gizmo was used by my father. Wow, Mr. Faraday wasn't just a great prosecutor. He was really a great thief, huh? Yeah, my father worked really hard to steal the truth. But he was killed. And the Yatagarasu was no more. But despite that, the Yatagarasu has been spotted again recently. Someone other than you. Here, Mr. Edgeworth. Take a look at this article. The Yatagarasu sent the embassy a calling card. Yeah, meaning this person's a fake. I'm almost certain that Callisto Yu lady is behind this. Because the real Yatagarasu would never send something like a gaudy card out. But the Yatagarasu did send a white card along with anything to be publicised. That's what Detective Bad told me seven years ago, if memory serves. Well, as soon as I heard the news, I got all wound up, and I knew I just I couldn't just let it go. So I searched you out, so that I could obtain the truth behind the Yatagarasu. Because if anyone can help me find it, I figured it's you, Mr. Edgeworth. So you're saying that I have your father's and Miss Yu's identities backwards? Yes, because the real Yatagarasu is noble to the end. And I want to revive the real, noble Yatagarasu. If I don't, my father will never be able to rest in peace. Kay. Kay, you're so honourable. I don't care what anyone else thinks. I'll always be here to cheer you on, pal. Even if you are honourable, a thief is a thief. And if you are plotting to commit a crime, then I'm afraid I can't be complicit. Mr. Ridgeworth. Oh, you guys are not making it easy for me. Who am I supposed to support now? Oh. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, what I want from you is not to steal something. What I want is the arrest of that evil woman. That evil woman? You mean Callisto Yu? I think it's too hard for me to catch her all by myself. But I thought that since you were able to expose her for what she is, then maybe... Please, Mr. Edgeworth, won't you help me? Come to think of it, I do believe I owe you. Huh? Owe me for what? When Miss Yu made her escape, it was you who saved my life. Furthermore, you helped me with the investigation today. I am not so rude as to leave favours unrepaid. Th then you mean... Yes. That case has been weighing down my soul ever since that fateful day. Perhaps the time has come to settle things once and for all. If you don't intend to sully your hands in a crime, then I believe I can help you. Mr. Edgeworth, thank you! Yay, Mr. Edgeworth, sir! Isn't that great, Kay? 
Yeah, it sure is, Gummy. Even though he had completely forgotten about her until just now. Ugh, what is with their chummy relationship? <laughs> He's so bothered by it for some reason. The great thief Yetagarasu. After all that time, the true identity of the thief sank back into the darkness. Burn Faraday, Callisto Yu, and K Faraday. The phantasmagorically changing identity of the great thief, Yatagarasu. And the Yatagarasu's real goal. It would all come to light the day after I made that promise to Kay. Hmm. So all this happens like all really close together. Turn about a blaze. Ooh. So that's going to be the last episode. Well. In about the span of a week. Wow. That's a heck of a week. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, so that picture's gumshoe. Alright, so the final picture is going to be K. Oops, spoilers. There you can see the little key in her hair. Okay. There you go. We finished case four. Wasn't sure if we could finish it today, but we did. So that's pretty cool. What's the time? 6.30. I think I might stop here, actually, and give my voice a bit of a rest. Yeah. I think this is a good time to stop. And then we'll start up case five next time. The last case in the game. So that should be fun. Well, thank you all for watching. That was a really good case. That was my favourite so far. Definitely. It was good. Just see if anyone's streaming. Nah. No one's streaming. Lame. Yeah. Thank you all. I'll see you later. See you.